Hey guys, Distiller Magic here, and it's time to show off my second Monument deck, which, as you may remember, I said was much better than my other one, which is uh, green-blue. The Monuments themselves are stronger, the deck is faster, just generally more likely to win. I mean, that's <laughs> when it comes down to it, this is more likely to win you a game of Magic. So, um, I would build this. Also, it's, God, probably 75% less money, at least. I don't even see any money in this damn set. Maybe Anguished. Or not this set, this deck. <laughs> the, well, also this set, Amon Cat. Ha ha ha. Um, the most expensive card, honestly, is probably Oketra, and she's the least necessary. Feel free to not put her in. Also, this deck list is slightly incorrect. Um, there's one too many planes and not enough swamps, but it will be correct when I put it into the description. Or I should say, after I forget to put it in the description, somebody leaves a comment telling me, hey, Des, put it in the description. So anyway, Shambling Vents, love it. Um, it's a dual land. Yeah, it comes in tapped, whatever, get over it. Um, it it only is three to activate, which is one less than the other one, Lumbering. And it's a 2-3 lifelinker. A lot of survivability. I love it. Definitely put it in. Concealed, I mean, you don't necessarily need your mana this quick. Um, but for the kill spells, you do, because they both, both cost three. Um, I do have four Fatal Push in the sideboard, but that's like, 10 bucks a card right now, so ouch. Uh, then we got Forsaken Sanctuary, just straight up comes in tapped, but when you've got a black, white, colorless creature and all you can reduce in cost is the colorless, you need colors and you need the colors to be accurate, so you really do need this land in there. Then Sandstone, you really don't need this land in there, I only put in two. Um, comes in tapped, so that sucks, but plus one, plus one, and Vigilance to a creature you control, hello. Um, you could also drop this in, target, and uh, Eternal Scourge, and it is gone. It is the next aisle because you just targeted it. Very nice little little trick there. Um, and because there's two of these, that's why there should be one less planes, one more swamp, like I said. Then there's Westvale Abbey. Very, very, very unnecessary. I think, oh, this might actually be the most expensive card in the deck. It's probably tied with Oketra. I think they're both three fifty, four bucks, something like that. I mean, how high could it possibly be? Um... Maybe somebody will spike the price by putting this in a zombie deck. I'm not sure. But um, either way, I mean, sack five creatures, transform it. It's a 9-7 flying indestructible lifelink demon. I can only think of two cards that can stop it. I mean, clip wings and blessed alliance, and neither one are very um, effective. Well, then there's like to the slaughter and stuff. I mean, there's some obscure cards that can kill it, but otherwise... Oh, and obviously exiling it, so... Yeah, but it's very hard to remove. Very, very, very hard. It is a game winner. Plus, uh, five death triggers on your side might just kill them. I did take out a couple death triggers, but there's a couple in this deck. So then, plain swamps, yeehaw. Zulaport, hey, talking about uh, death triggers. Whenever he or another creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. Fantastic. Um... The next one arguably could be Gifted Aetherborn if you really want it. I just like creating two creatures because that's funny to me. This is all about a stall deck. It's control stall. Um, it's not about aggression. It's not about swinging. You can actually win the game without even swinging once, and you'll see why. Uh, so it gets two energy, swing once, spend it, and you create a servo. So one more thing to die. That's about it. Also, Death Touch. Very, very, very important to speed decks. Um, next up we got Bantu's Monument and Oketra. So Bantu's black creatures cost one generic less, so they cannot have their cost reduced, uh, into the colored mana. That can't happen. Uh, then, this is crazy, whenever you cast a creature spell, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. Hello. Uh, then we've got Oketra's Monument, white creatures cost one less, and whenever you cast a creature spell, create a 1-1 one, one white warrior creature token with Vigilance. I would put this monument in a deck that's not even white, because honestly, they probably should have put the word white in the second ability on every single one of these. Cost reduction, who cares? Decks will play right through it. I mean, they it's nice, but nobody really relies on it. Um, creating a token every time you are already bringing a creature onto the field, now you got two. I mean, blocking, death triggers, cryptolith right, you name it. Number of creatures, very important. Even Westvale, I mean, duh. Um, next up, we've got Drana's Emissary, uh, flying 2-2 two, two for, well, let's be honest, 2, because, um, I mean, you can shave off the majority of the generic in this deck at least one at a time, because you're probably going to hit at least one monument in a given game. Uh, hitting both is kind of unlikely, that's in like the 20% range. Um, but anyway, at the beginning of your upkeep, just sitting there doing nothing, boom, each opponent loses one life and you gain one. And that's all amplified by Cliffhaven, obviously, so you get the 2 to 1s, but then we've got Campbell... Everybody loves them. There's only one left because I had to put in, like, emergency Aether Poisoners because I was just losing to speed decks. So now it doesn't. 
oh well, it is what it is. Could you remove the last one and put it in an Aether Poisoner? Probably. Should I? Probably. Um, <laughs> there's three Campbells in the sideboard, though, I'll tell you that, because whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell, that player loses two life and you gain two, and he's a 2-3 for, let's be honest, two. So, Anticipate and Glimmer decks, they die. Um, Counterspell decks, to an extent, they die. And Kill decks, assuming they don't kill him first, they die. I mean, this guy's just insane. He's so, so detrimental. Even artifacts, even planeswalkers. I mean, you name it. If it's a non-creature spell, they get hit by it. So very, very important. At the very least, put him in the sideboard. And by the way, I believe he's a dollar or less. Now, Pious Evangel is pretty good. Um, once again, we're an ex-mage. I can't really flip the card. Oh, wait, I'm sure there's a way to... Uh, there it is. Okay. So, um, Pious Evangel costs three. Uh, only one is white, two is generic. So you can't really reduce it past two unfortunately but um whenever he or another creature enters the battlefield under your control you gain one life that's huge 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 um then pay two sack another permanent there's your death trigger for zulaport and transform pious evangel now sacrifice a permanent a permanent i mean like how weird is that everybody even has to read this card twice to remember that it's non it doesn't have to be a creature so you could just be like oh i dropped my seventh land in <laughs> get rid of it then you flip him he becomes wayward disciple and he's basically zulaport now he does also have four toughness um whenever he or another creature dies uh plus one minus one on the life there you go so pretty darn nice i mean two two is nice two four is better and he doesn't have a way to flip back on like most um, werewolves. So I love him. Then we got Anguished Unmaking. Um, honestly, I would probably put four in because there's only eight kill spells total. And that's the bare minimum you need. Uh, the sideboard does a fatal push in it. But honestly, you could probably get away with like Grasp of Darkness if you don't want to spend $40 on your sideboard. Considering the whole damn deck is less than $40. Uh, so that's a shame. I mean, this isn't exactly a fast deck. You could have another three costs like Murder. It wouldn't make an ounce of difference, honestly. Murder will actually destroy anything. You know, any creature. Uh, Fatal Push, it has to be two or less. I mean, if, if you by some miracle get, um, uh, what do you call it, Revolt to go off, good for you. But you can't reliably control that. I mean, there's his four sack. That's it. There's nothing else. <laughs> so, yeah, good luck with that. Um, so, yeah, this deck could be tuned a little bit better. I would just kick Campbell completely out, maybe. I just left one in because I thought it was funny. And put in either another Aether Poisoner or Anguished. Um, and then Oketra, the least necessary card in the deck. But she is like, if she comes out, they better deal with her. Quick. Um, now, unlike the original gods from Theros, she is a creature... Just can't attack or block. So she might as well not be there, but they could blow her up before she's, you know, quote, activated or whatever. Um, I, I like her. I mean, she costs four. She can be reduced to three. Okay. Double strike indestructible. Hello. Would be a lot better if I had a boost spell in this deck, which I don't. Uh, doesn't even use counters, honestly. But um, as long as you control three other creatures other than her, which, you know, you probably will, um, you can swing with her. And then that's six damage. I mean, and she's indestructible, so who cares that her toughness is six? But then she can't be grasped. So, um, you could also just pay three, or four. Cre god, this font, dude. Oh my god. Create a 1-1 one, one white warrior token, a uh, creature token with vigilance. The exact same as Oketra's monument. So, there you go. You can use the same token. So, that's just flooding. More death triggers with Zulaport. More death triggers with Pius. More targets for Pius to sack. Um, just very nice. And Cliffhaven, most important card in the whole damn thing. Well, except for maybe the kill spells. Flying, Vampire, you can cast it for two, if you're lucky. Um, two, four, very hard to blow up. Um, whenever you gain life, each opponent loses one life. So, you saw all the life gain. It's not pretty, especially Pious, an unflipped Pious. So, whether he's flipped or not, they're gonna start getting hit and it's gonna be amplified. Very, very, very nice. And then, of course, the final card, never to return. So, it's a sorcery, it's double black. Oh, well. Um, destroy target creature, Planeswalker. Very, very, very handy. And then Return is, um, uh, of course, Aftermath, which, uh, Aftermath, which is basically uh, Flashback. Uh, exile target card from a graveyard. So always target your opponent. Um, and then create a 2-2 two -two black zombie creature token. So if you are just sick to death of them using Torrential Gear Hulk to flashback some glimmer, anticipate, counter spell, 
you know, engulf the shore, like whatever, nuke the card. I mean, the funny thing is it doesn't say creature card. I have no idea why, because that's how every other zombie card works. Whatever. Um, so yeah, return is nice. I mean, it can't be reduced. None of these have, you know, reduction in the spell cost because it's not a creature. But this is just a good card, and it's not terribly expensive yet. I think it's about three bucks a piece. Um, so yeah, pretty cheap deck overall. So I might dump one Oketra and put in another Anguish, dump another Oketra and put in an Aether Poisoner, or dump Campbell and put in an Aether Poisoner, just for consistency. I think it needs a little bit of early game board presence, and... Um, Honestly, the sideboard could use another dirt cheap uh, Death Toucher. I did put Bone Picker in the sideboard because it was originally in the deck and I swapped it with Aether Poisoner because it's just better. Um, actually, no, I pulled I pulled Campbell to put in Aether Poisoner. I'm not sure what the original version of this deck was. Um, it's a 3-2 Flying Death Toucher for one, but it only costs one if a creature died this turn. Uh, kind of hard to get that to happen. It wasn't too hard, but if they've already blown up everything on your field, like on their turn or during your end step, you're in trouble. You're never going to get a bone picker out. So if they're running flyers, some kind of like, I don't know, dragon deck or something, I can't imagine what it would be. It would be nice to put in bone picker, but I think maybe in its place you should put in, um, I don't know, Gnarlwood is is uh, green. I think there's a one or two cost death toucher. I mean, there it's it's black. Like the rats or something. I think there's a two cost rat. I don't know. Uh, plague rats or something like that. Um, but then, yeah, definitely Campbell. I mean, definitely. I would definitely put him in. And then if they're running a speed deck, you're going to need better than two, three cost removals. That's too late, too slow, too unreliable. So, Fatal Push, Grasp of Darkness, maybe Murder. I mean, that does cost three. I don't love it. You know, some kind of one or two cost black removal stopper. You can even do, like, Flaying Tendrils if you want to just sweep if they're playing uh, tokens or something like that. Um, I wouldn't go Yehenny's Expertise. That's a little excessive. It'll kill basically everything on your side in the entire deck. Uh, that's a little rough. <laughs> But, um, yeah, that's what I recommend for the sideboard. So you can clearly see how this works. It's just drain away triggers, drain away triggers, and you're sitting on 20 creatures. Maybe you can flood swing. Some of them are flying. You might be able to, you know, do something with that. A lot of big toughness, not much swing power, but, um, you know, it's just good. This is a good deck. So um, feel free to mod it the way you want, and I might have a slightly different version of it in the description that's a little bit more idealized. I just really like Oketra. Plus, the deck is called Dago and Mittens, because Dago is, of course, what I named uh, Bantu. And, well, it's more of a jackal, not a dog, I know, but still, come on, Dago. And then Oketra, which, of course, I named Mittens. So, uh, yeah, Dago and Mittens. I, I was going to call it, like, gray something again because it's black and white, but I have too many decks called gray something, and uh, none of the ideas that came up with ver were very good. So, uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this deck. Uh, feel free to build it. It is very competitive. Um, I played it against some friends of mine and stuff, and it did so much better than the uh, Monumental Discount deck. So, I mean, considering the low cost and the fact that almost all these cards are from older sets, yeah, I would definitely build this. Uh, so watch for some gameplay uploading soon, and I'll see you guys next video.